our first step is just being able to understand the demands of their swimming start. So my lovely drawing up here uh, is to represent the swimmer on top of the block. And keep in mind, this is not to scale. <laughs> um, but we have the swimmer set up on the block. And how this happens is we ask the swimmer in the competition to take their mark where they are flexing at the hip, flexing at the knee, flexing at the ankle to bring themselves closer down to the block. This is to increase the stretch throughout the hip, throughout the uh, lower, uh, lower posterior chain, and also to increase the tension of the muscles that they are ready to use to explode off the blocks. Now, when we're looking at a start, we tend to see a lot of novice swimmers, you know, swimmers that are just getting used to the water, being up a little bit higher, they not, they're not quite familiar with how it's gonna to feel to enter the water, so they might be a little shy. All right, so we're gonna see a novice swimmer have a much greater angle, okay? It's very, gonna be very sharp because they wanna make sure that they're not gonna belly flop. If we go out too far and there's no angle, that's when we hit the water like a brick, okay? We don't want that because it feels uncomfortable. So a lot of novice swimmers are going to have this experience where they're either going to drive out and they're gonna belly flop or they're gonna be very cautious and have a direct entry. Now, what happens when we have that direct entry? When the swimmer dives straight down, it's going to take a long time for them to reach the surface for them to then break open the water and begin their opening stroke. So when we get to this point, we label this the breakout. So the breakout is a very uh, important component because that is where we're going to get the most explosive start. So we are trying to uh, feed forward this system. If the swimmer has a poor start, they're going to have a poor breakout. And what Moranis et al. defines is the first 15 meters of the swimming start especially in your shorter distance swims, so your 50 meter, your 100 meter, and your 200 meter, the 15 meter, that time it takes during that distance of the, the competition is gonna be the most important factor for those who are looking to win. So if we have that poor start, it's going to cause a poor breakout, and therefore we're going to decrease the time it takes to finish the race. Now, if we start breaking this down, possibly with some type of video analysis, you know, all it takes is a camera phone and being able to look at the swimmer from the side. And there are plenty of apps now where you can actually draw the angle. So estimating from the foot contact or the block, if we can get the video and label this point and see which angle that swimmer is dropping out at, we can then better understand just how strong they are and understand uh, what we need to work on as far as technique. Now, I mentioned that you know, we have the novice swimmers who might just drop in. So is that more strength or skill? We have to understand that putting an athlete in a good position is great, but if we're not understanding of their strength ability, than putting them in a position that might be the best for their body, but not enough for their force velocity characteristics of the hip and knee and ankle joints, then we're ultimately failing as a coach. So we need to best understand one, their strength, and two, their technique. So if we give them the goal of one, we want to reach out farther, okay? and we start noticing that angle turn from this shallow dive into a greater angle coming off the block or coming into the water, then we're going to start understanding that, one, the skill is increasing. That's a check, okay? Next, we look into their strength. So as we get stronger and stronger, we start to see this takeoff angle get just a little bit bigger. So maybe initially, we're starting to see that angle very, very shallow, very small. And then as we increase in strength, we're looking to increase this angle that they are propelling off the block. 
Again, so as we go out, if we are exceeding this 30 degrees, it has the same effects as if we took this very, very deep dive. So if we draw this line up and predict its fall, again, we're starting to see the, the angle of the body increasing and diving down deeper into the water. Now, this again is going to have the same impact. It's going to take greater time for the athlete to achieve that distance and the time where they break out. And again, the breakout is the key component here. We want the breakout to be explosive. We want the first 15 meters to be the fastest. Yes. Now, it's not to say that after the 15 meters, they stop and they slow down, but this is going to carry the propulsive forces within the water to finish the event. So we always, stay, we always say in the swimming pool, you start fast, you finish faster. Okay? So, uh, as we're getting stronger, we're going to try to optimize this angle. And again, we give a little bit of strength, and then we come back to technique. And it's this never ending feed forward system where after we demonstrate increases in the skill, we start looking back at their physical characteristics and begin to give them more tools so that they can use those tools for their skill and technique. Come on.